Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. I'm very excited to talk to you about some of the application work we've been doing at Nix with the Intel Mic. So, a little bit of background. Nix is a National Science Foundation funded institution that operates Kraken, which is the largest academic computer in the world and uh, the most productive NSF supercomputer. Within Nix, I am a director for the Application Acceleration Center of Excellence. Uh, it's been established recently, and uh, the point there is to prepare the national supercomputing community for these future technologies. Okay, and we want to do this by working with students and, and increasing the educational impact as well. So, Nix has entered a strategic engagement with Intel, and this point is to uh, cooperate very, very, very closely. Okay, across several years to. Uh, Combine the, the, the development of scientific applications with the mic, okay? And we get early access to the technologies, and they get great feedback from us, okay? So we're helping to guide the product development as well. So to give you an idea where we, where we are at right now, we've got several hardware resources. Uh, Rook, which is the initial software development platform that we use, it's got two Knights ferries in it. Bishop is a Cray CX-1 cluster with two compute nodes, each with a Knights ferry in it. Knight is an APRO cluster, which has four compute nodes, each with two Knight's ferries, for a total of eight Knight's ferries in it. And coming soon, we'll have Beacon. Beacon will have up to 64 Sandy Bridge CPUs and 64 Knight's ferry cluster uh, cards. And the point of Beacon is going to be to extend an outreach to the educational community, the NSF community, and allow them to have access to some of these resources and work with us in advance so that they're prepared to... Okay, there. Is that better? Okay, sorry. So the point, as I was saying, is to, to make this available to NSF researchers so that they can prepare for the commercial launch of the product. So the first application I'd like to talk about today is NWChem. It's a premier massively parallel chemistry code. It's used throughout the NSF world and the DOE world for a broad variety of applications. It scales to over 100,000 processors, and it's several million lines of code of Fortran and C, and it's all open source. So NWChem is currently running on the mic for us. It runs in standalone native mode. We treated it simply as a 64-bit Linux system and is running internal on the mic with MPI and global arrays. Okay. Initial successes, we had no real compilation issues at all. It was clean. We configured it as an x86 target. All the code seemed to work. Okay. Important point here, currently only a very small fraction of NWChem is functional on GPUs. We have the whole code running on the mic right now. So, status. We're linked against the MKL, the math kernel library, and all the initial tests were perfect. Okay, we're currently running the quality assurance suite, and uh, we're getting ready to test global arrays in parallel. And then we'll begin working on optimizing the actual performance at that point. Next code I'd like to talk to you about is ELK. It's an electronic structures code. Okay, once again, it's an open source code. It uses a variety of techniques, such as density functional theory, hartree fock theory, and Green's function theory to compute everything from first principles. Okay, experience with ELK was very similar. It's a code with Fortran 90, OpenMP, and message passing. Okay, it will run in a hybrid mode. Currently, right now, all of our work has been using strictly OpenMP on the mic in native mode. It was a simple effort to port it. We compiled it with an additional, fl an additional flag. Then we copied the executable, the libraries, input files, that sort of thing, to the mic and executed it. That's all it took. Okay? No code changes were necessary at all. Source code file never had to be opened. So what did we get? Well, we ran a test case with 27 different crystal momenta to compute a bulk silicon uh, solution. And, uh, we got a, an efficiency in this case, which uh, was over 80%. The parallel uh, limit here is set by the 27 different crystal momentum. So the maximum speed up we were expecting on this case was 27. Now I'd like to move into computational fluid dynamics. It's been used uh, in engineering for quite a while to help de design different aspects of all sorts of advanced vehicles. It's a very important application in industry. In this effort, we've developed two full solvers from scratch, one of which is an Euler solver. It uses five state variables per grid node, and then one's a Boltzmann solver. It uses a Boltzmann equation, which has hundreds of thousands of state variables per grid node. Okay. Two totally different scales of applications there, and you'll see shortly that both of them work very well. So the test problems that we ran, we ran a side shock problem, which is an unsteady shock problem. It allows us to make sure we can detect shock waves and track the unsteady motion through the flow field. 
And then we ran a coet flow problem, which is a, a problem with a flow between two plates where at one or both of the plates are moving. In this case, we had one moving. Okay, that lets us determine that we can actually work with solid boundaries correctly and that we can handle movement on those boundaries. So here are the results. We ended up with a correct solution for both the side shock and the coet flow. And more importantly, we did so extremely efficiently. Okay. If you just look here, our speed up, we ran near perfect speed up all the way up to the limit of the card here. Okay. With single precision on the Euler problem here on the left, we obtained 99% of the ideal speed up on this card. And that's all without having to optimize the code specifically for the card. Okay. The Boltzmann equation didn't do quite as well. We're up in the 70s, roughly. And we've actually identified the source of that. It's an algorithmic issue on our part, and we're in the process of correcting it. So what are the observations here? Well, running CFD solvers were very easy. Okay. It, all we had to do was compile these things with an option, run it on the mic, copy the stuff over, execute it, and we're done. We get great performance. The results clearly indicate that these sorts of algorithms are well suited for the mic. Right? Achieved 99% of the maximum expected speed up with very little effort. Okay? And it's worth noting that in this case, the cards had 32 cores, but we used 96 threads. So you have a, an extra number of threads to help you actually achieve greater parallelism through different methods, depending on how your code can make use of it. Next code, the Enzo Astrophysics code. This is a very big code. It's certainly the largest code that uh, I've ever been involved with. I, I uh, support this code running on Kraken, and it also runs on Jaguar. It's responsible for some of the largest astrophysics cosmology type solutions that have ever been run. Okay, Very important NSF and DOE type application. So this first case here is actually one of the solutions that ran on Kraken. It ran on 93,750 cores, Okay, and uh, it computed some of the early stages of the universe. And now they're working on a reionization problem using an insight proposal on Jaguar. Okay. Well, Enzo R is a hybrid MPI OpenMP code. It uses standard C, C++, and Fortran. Okay. It's approximately a quarter million lines of code. But it uses HDF5, it uses Hyper, it uses FFTs. Okay. It uses a lot of, of library-type applications as well. So when you look at it in its complete form, this is actually millions of lines of code. Okay. So most of this code was cleanly vectorizable. Enzo has its roots all the way back in the day of the vector machines. Enzo is now running on the mic. As I said, it's more than a million lines of code. Um, importantly, we have mPitch, HDF5, and Hyper running, those libraries that are required. Okay. Those libraries are used throughout a wide number of applications um, in NSF and DOE land. Okay. In this case, um, it took very little effort to actually achieve this. It was primarily accomplished by one person over about a week. Okay, That's significant. I don't know that I could start working on a GPU code in that time frame. Okay, So Enzo tools are also working here. It's a hybrid MPI OpenMP preprocessor that's used to set up all the grids and everything that you use. It's been parallelized. It runs just as well. Okay. So the initial scaling study shows a pretty strong scaling result for Enzo straight out of the box with no optimization. Okay, we're, we're getting a theme here, right? So where is Enzo now? Enzo is currently operational with all physical modes. And at this stage, we're working on improving the scalability so that that curve looks even better than it did. So what sorts of features have actually allowed all this work to take place in this time frame? Primarily, the fact that we can use standard programming models and languages, okay, standard tools for parallel development work. Okay. Threading, there's plenty of it to let us take advantage of whatever type of parallelism we're able to find in the application. And the scalar vector programming model maps really well to complex control flows. Okay. Fully functional math kernel library from Intel, if all you need is some standard library calls, you're set to go. Okay. And finally, when you get ready to really dig down into the core things and try to squeeze out every last little drop of performance, you have a very rich set of vector intrinsics to work with. Okay. So, quick recap. Easy to use. Very easy to use. We have MPI running on the card. We have it running between cards on a node. 
and we have it running between cards across multiple nodes. And we accomplished all of this work, all of that, with a handful of people in a handful of weeks. Thank you.